Good morning, and welcome to Brewing Happiness with my cup of happy. And another morning of sharing a cup of a cup of joe or a cup of tea or a cup of whatever you love, and some thoughts on happiness or on living a happy life. So I have always been a voracious reader. I was kind of a nerd in school and uh, the librarian was my best friend. I spent a lot of time there reading and checking out books and exchanging it. When the bookmobile would come in the summertime, you were only supposed to check out three books, but the ladies knew I would get those done and not fill up the two weeks until they came back. And so they would let me check out eight or nine books. I'd walk home from the book, from the bookmobile with my large stack of books. And anyway, it's a habit I always prided myself on, right? Read a classic every three or four books of fiction. I read a classic just because it's part of a good education, right? And somehow I have gotten away from that. I've gotten away from reading TV, video games, grandkids. I don't know. I've just gotten away from reading. And so I have made it an effort, made it a, a point this summer to reinvigorate or reinstitute my habit of always having two to three books going at one time and reading anything I can get my hands on. So with that said, I'm going to be adding a flavor to the show and doing a weekly book report. I read such wonderful books and then I get so inspired by great ideas and great thoughts that I want to talk about. them. So this is my perfect chance to do that. So today, I'm actually not going to talk about a book I am currently reading. I'm just going to talk about one I have read and reread multiple times. Now, I came across this little gem a few years ago, The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment by Thaddeus Golis. As you can see, it is a very thin book, 80 pages. I came across this little pamphlet in some books my son had left at the house. I picked it up and started reading it and rocked my world, changed my mind brought in new ideas that really changed the way I think about myself, the universe, enlightenment, love. And so I thought I'd talk about this today. As you can see closely, it says the lazy man's guide and someone has put there on top W-O, the lazy woman's guide. So that's how I think of it is the lazy woman's guide to enlightenment. Now this book was written in 1972. Thaddeus Golis said he was really tired of, he had, had had this enlightenment, had these thoughts, and kind of tired of talking about them. So he thought, I'm going to write them down one time. And then all my friends can just read it, and I don't have to tell them again all the time. Well, this little book um, became very popular, kind of a cult classic, right? Now, Mr. Golan himself, Mr. Golis himself, never toured, never lectured, wrote the book and said, thank you very much. He actually did write a follow-up book, but didn't promote his own book, didn't do much, but say, there, there you go, I wrote it down. Thank you very much. But it was so well done and so inspiring that some people got together, got the rights, started printing it. You can buy this on Amazon, not this, not this version, but you can get a version of, of The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment on Amazon. And I'm going to highly recommend it. If you look at mine, you see it has been it has been uh, colored on by my grandson, who had a little time with it. I, it was already old when I got it, let's be fair. But then started falling apart, so I've taped it together. You can see where I've highlighted things, and, and I keep a little sticky notes, and I have to read between the scribbles sometimes. But I love this version of the book so much. This little copy has become so important to me that I... Even though I have a nice, clean copy to read from, I, I use this one because it means something to me. So, Thaddeus Golis, The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment. And then on the second note, as we get started, five minutes into the show, um, this extemporaneous thing. I'm not sure how well this is working for me. I took notes. I started to take notes. And look, I, have, I, I thought, I'll just do sticky notes. I have five pages of notes. And I only got through the first couple chapters of the book. So, conciseness, 
bullet points, not scripting. I'm working on this. Working on this. Okay. So, you'll excuse me when I consult my handwritten notes today, right? I'm not sure it's better for the show. Anyway, Mr. Golis says in the very beginning of the book that laziness brings him to the conclusion that enlightenment does not require effort or skill or good morning, Joanne. Welcome to, welcome to the show. It does not, it does not require skill, discipline, a, a strict diet. Uh, it is just a group of ideas to accept and to try on. And he says, and he says very clearly in the book, I am not trying to convince you of anything. These are ideas that have worked for me. I invite you to try these ideas out on your own life and experiment with them and decide if they work for you. So I liked his whole attitude of, eh, believe it or not, this is what I believe. And I'm just going to share it with you. And if you like it, yay. And if you don't, that's okay too. So I loved that aspect of the book and um, the very simple ideas. So we're going to go through some of these simple ideas. And again, forgive me because I'm looking at notes. Um, and they're and you know what? They're not well written. They're in a in a, in bad in bad uh, handwriting. So anyway. Says Chayamon. So the basic idea of the of the book is this. The, the basic premise of the book is this. We are all equal beings in the universe. Right? That we in the universe is nothing but our relationship with one another, right? Each being totally in control of himself, totally makes all decisions, and can decide where he live, where we live, how we vibrate. We choose to be happy, not happy, uh, to choose love or, or, or not choose love. And basically, Mr. Golis says that the whole, the whole thing is about uh, our basic function in life is expanding or contract. There's that that being with another being in the same space and fully accepting and allowing that being to be who who they are to make their own decisions and accept those decisions no matter what that that is love in action, right? And that in every situation that we have. We only have two choices. Expand in love or contract away from it. And that this decision in any moment in time kind of determines the experience that you're having, right? So we are okay. This is not working out great for me, is it? Expanded an expanded consciousness, right? That's where you are vibrating at a very high level, where you are very light and you have acceptance and love going on. As you contract, we move into denseness, right? Into thickness, into those low vibrational emotions of resentment, fear, frustration, anger, disappointment, whatever, right? And that a completely expanded state is permeative, right? It, it, it coexists in the same space as everything around it, right? This is your awareness. This is your enlightenment. So, so basically, we are a bunch of vibrating beings, right? All vibrating around each other. And there's infinite number of interactions going on as we all vibrate and those vibrations change minute to minute and we are around vibrating beings and their vibrations are changing from second to second that we are inter vibrating and boy that is a lot going on right and so basically we are free in our vibration to do anything we want to do no oh, this is yeah i'm not doing this system anymore
anything we want to do within the existing laws of relationship to other beings. If what you're doing is interfering with another person's space or decisions, well, that's not okay, right? But as long as what you're doing is just about, is, is not negatively impacting, and yet you may not know that you're negatively impacting because everyone is responsible for how they receive information and react to it. One of the things, the, the, the continuing themes in this book is that 85% of the human race vibrating under 200. Joanne, where should we be vibrating? What's the number? Our aim is to get a vibration up to 500. And how do I know this? We're going to ask Joanne. Ask Joanne this morning. And how do, we might have to have you back on just to talk about this very idea. Is it, well, we'll talk about raising vibrations, but I want to know how you're measuring it. Anyway, Mr. Golan says, love is the action of being in the same space with another being in fully accepting them, right? That, oh. It is not that love is not something we feel. It's something we do, right? It's the action of expanding our awareness and our acceptance. When we contract away from it, we, when we are expanded, the physical world is, is, is less important to us, is less impactful to us. It's just a kind of a, a matter of our existence. Yeah, it's around us. But as we're operating in low density, low vibrations, that physical world becomes very real to us, right? It, it, what's going on is so impactful to us. The higher we vibrate, the more we realize we are in control of those things that go around us. We can choose to remove ourselves or react differently anytime we want, right? So in this world, in this world, we are we are, so we are all, the idea is there's no blame, right? We're all exactly, okay, the vibrations are the feelings that we feel when you feel love is lighter, but when you have shame, yes, it's heavy. So I want to know about the 500. I want to know how I measure what my vibration is. That's my question to you, Joanne. Um, but the idea here is that there's no blame because we all chose to be here. If, uh, if you follow the idea that all beings, physical beings, spiritual all beings have that this is a choice to incarnate in the physical world to that's a whole other discussion right why would we come down here and incarnate but that as a as a being we, we chose our parents the time frame that we were born in uh, the physical body uh the situation in which we were born is we we determine these things so there's nobody to blame right if you accept responsibility for all choices then you have the then that also means you accept the power to make any change that makes sense to you. So where we are, no but where we are is no accident, right? And there's no blame. And this makes you able to relax, relax. There's no secrets. Nothing is lost. You are perfect right where you are. You have everything inside of you that you need. If you are willing to, let go of limits and embrace all the potential, all the potential decisions, all the potential um, future experiences that are in you, the experience of choices. It's so simple. Expansion is love and action. It's available to you anytime by giving your loving attention to whatever is around you whomever is around you, whatever is going on around you. By leaning in love, accepting in love, you are expanding to be in the space with those things at the same time. When we contract away from them, when we withhold love, when we, when we withdraw love, right? We become smaller beings. We are not, we're not in the same space with them. We're in our own little dense space here, feeling our feelings caught up in our in our dense emotions and we're not really when you're caught up in those dense emotions you're really not participating you're really not being in the same loving space as another being deep stuff i know i know 
Love is the only, let's see. Love is the only thing we need to change. This is the most fantastic idea I've ever heard. There's only one change you ever need to make for enlightenment, and that is to be open to love, to lean into love, to move towards love and acceptance. One action. And anytime you're not doing that, moving away from love, choosing to contract, choosing to slow down your vibration. And the, the power, the freedom in knowing I just have to do one thing. I just have to expand my love and that's all there is to it. And if you're trying this and, and you don't really, maybe you don't really know how to do that yet. Cause maybe you're not really sure what that loving this ugly situation feels like. Well, that's okay. That's all right. Then love yourself for, for thinking about it. Love yourself for wanting to expand, right? Love yourself that you are, you are, slowly turning the ship to that spot where you're going to just take off and expand. It's okay if it takes a minute to get that, right? You cannot rise. Well, you cannot stay. You can rise, but you cannot stay above your vibration level that you are at right now until you learn to love yourself exactly where you are right now no matter where you are on your journey, right? Whether you're just starting out on an enlightenment journey or you have been here and you are dealing with a high level, those great big high level uh, enlightenment tasks, right? Maybe no matter where you are in that journey, you just have one choice. To expand the love and forward or to contract from it and stay where you are, right? Those are the only two choices. I love the simplicity of this idea. Whatever you're doing, I like it. This is really bad. I can't read my own writing. All right, so here's the next point. Whatever you're doing that is not leaning towards love, right? Eh, we're just humans. We all, we all, we wish we were, we wish we were that great that we lived in this expanded state of love at every moment of every day. And that's what we're striving for. And that's our nirvana. But we know it's a journey. And we know that, again, our our growth line is, is jaggedy. Nobody goes straight up. Everybody has setbacks. But no matter where you are, um, when, no matter what you're doing, remember that it's all a part of you. You're choice not to choose expansion, your falter of um, giving into negative emotions, your inability to, I will add the chat to the page later. Excellent. Good, good. Joanne's going to tell us how to measure our vibrations. We're going to have a different, another show all about getting a number around the, you know me, I'm a data kid. I loved, I love data. So I want, I want numbers. I want to put numbers to anything, everything. Anyway, the negative part of you will always be a part of you. You're never going to let go of it. You're not going to resist it. But you can learn to transcend it. You can learn to say, I've grown past this. Still a part of me. Part of my history. Can't pretend like it didn't happen. Can't cut it off and throw it away. It's a part of me. But that's okay. I can accept it. I can rise above it. I can expand beyond it. Expand beyond that, right? You're going to start where you are and lean into love. I love that statement. The universe is full of live beings, all equal, all controlling what level they vibrate at at any given moment and all responsible for their own choices. Now, for me, I came up with this little visual for myself. It helps me. I, I, I imagine each of us, and we're each in this clear tube that has kind of like a, 
what are those tubes in chemistry called? You know, you have the tube that's got the little notion. Uh, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah, that tube from chemistry. We're all in floating in a big tube, and it's marked our vibration level. So jo Joanne's given us, we want to be at 500 up here, but sometimes we're vibrating at 200, and sometimes we're down here vibrating at 25, right? And so I see us in this tube, and any moment we can choose to take in the love, give out the love, expand in love, and we immediately float to the top of the tube. We don't all, we're not always aware. We don't always remember. We get caught up in the other tubes floating around us and what they're saying to us. And we get caught up in what's going on in their tubes as each person equally all around us, right? In their own silo of their tube, choosing at any moment, whether they're at the top, I'm at 500, or whether they're down here at the bottom, dealing with those negative, low, dense, dense, earthly, earth, uh, worldly emotions, right? It's your choice. And at any moment, and this is what I love about Thaddeus Golan, he says, Golas, I keep calling Golan, Thaddeus Golas, is he says, you don't have to take a class. You don't have to worry about you're going to get there someday. You don't have to develop a skill. You just have to decide. You just have to lean into love, accept love, live from love, accept everything going on around you with good, bad, and ugly, right? Guts, feathers, and all. Accept it all with love. Understand that the, the lack of love, the loveless, is inside the love. You're not going to show. So I got some love and some not love. Love doesn't shine on just the love part, right? It shines on it all. Th this was a hard concept for me to learn to accept the, the negatives, to love the bad, to love the the not so great parts. All, so what do you have to do to be enlightened, right? What, what, if you don't need any of these things, what do you need to be enlightened? If I don't need to take a class, if I don't need to wait for something to happen, if I don't need to wait for a ah, epiphany moment, what do I need to do to be enlightened? I have nothing to learn. You have it all inside of you right now. All potential experiences are within you already. You can up to open up to them at any time just by being aware, just by being in love, just by choosing uh, um, just by choosing to float up to the top of the tube, right? Just by saying, I'm going to live in love. I'm going to accept it all. I'm going to love everything that happens around me. Now, for most of us, it's not that simple, right? We don't just wake up one day and go, I'm going to live in love. And then all of a sudden we're permanently at the top of the tube. No, that's not the way it happens. It happens in stages, right? We have an, we do have an epiphany. We have a deep emotional moment. We, we have a, an awakening and, and all of a sudden the world is different because we see the world you can't go on back. You can't go back. You can't unsee it. All of a sudden, we're seeing things from our new expanded vision, right? Yay. But then all of a sudden, uh, and, and again, we don't need any tools for this, but no matter where you are, you are free. And where was I going with this? I lost my train of thought. You solely determine where you are. The more you withdraw, the more you contract, the more you're in the physical world. Um, I had a good thought that I was going to talk about, but I forgot. To be whole is to know that when we emphasize a positive, okay, so this is the new thought. When we emphasize a positive, right? When I say to myself, I'm always going to have positive thinking then you have to acknowledge that there is negative thinking. And you have to own that you're probably not going to get to 100% positive thinking, right? So you have to own that, that negative thinking part of you or that opposites of whatever it is. I have knowledge, then there's ignorance. I have love, then there's lack of love. Um, I, as, we, as we accept all these, we, we have to acknowledge the negative, right? When we focus on knowledge and how much we know, we have to acknowledge 
that there's stuff we don't know. We don't know everything. That's right. If we deny the ignorance, it's a contraction. Denying reality is a contraction, right? I'm moving away from it. Oh, no, 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 no. But when I accept, oh, stuff I don't know. I'm smart here, but I got some things to learn over here. As I accept it in love, oh, yeah, my vibrations rise. I'm up the tube, right? We cannot control what we deny creating. Okay, so if I remain unresisting to the negative, then you're not obliged to dwell on it. If I ignore it, it's there to taunt me all the time, right? If we allow that ugliness is always within us, we're free to create beauty, right? Because we know that it we know that it takes them all. It takes all those to make us whole. We gotta love it all. Grandma used to say, guts, feathers, and all. Love it all. So as you raise your vibration, Here's what happens. Like I said, it's in gradients, right? It's in stages. You raise your vibration. You're on the new plane. Oh, I'm enlightened. And then you start bumping into some negatives or some challenging to your belief that you've been avoiding before when you were vibrating down here. Now you're here. You're seeing new problems, right? You don't just arrive and then everything is great. We wish it was that way. That's the, that would be what that would be great. But you arrive. And then you get the new set of challenges to overcome. Well, again, overcoming them is simple. It's you deciding to accept them. It's your leaning into them with love and saying, I'm going to love myself in spite of, I'm going to love all of me, including the parts. I don't like that much, right? I'm going to love all of you, including the parts I don't like that much. I'm going to love all of everyone including those that have a lot of parts that I don't like that much, right? And as you raise your vibration and these new or things you've been avoiding start running into you again. Now, if you resist them now, what happens? Contract back down the tube. I'm back down to back down. Or I expand and I love them and I accept them and I bring them into my lexicon of the universe and all things that I accept. I raise another one and I bump into a new negative thought or a new or a new challenge or a new concept that I now need to accept. This is growth. This is the enlightenment that we're talking about, right? Troubles don't go away, right? Uh, that's the bot. That's the bottom line. Your trouble. I'm trying to scroll up my yellow pad. <sighs> anyway, troubles don't go away. Um, you just learn to steer your way around them. You just learn to accept them all as part of the journey, still keeping that smile on your face, still loving and accepting all around you. Float above it, right? You begin to see you can change. Well, I can't remember. Okay, wow, wow, can't even read my own writing. Anyway, basically it says you can learn that you can change your emotions simply uh, by understanding their relationship to your awareness of the moment. What happened here? Oh. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to say I did not get through the entire book here. Just a couple of thoughts from the first couple of chapters. He goes on to the first chapter or two. He says, these are the concepts I want to talk about. And then he goes on to talk about them some more, explain them some more, add to them. And at the very end of the book, my favorite part, is some things that we might want to say to each other, say to ourselves, to um, redirect that awareness. Just give us awareness to where we're vibrating in our tube right now. I love the idea of Joanne gave us of adding, of putting a, a measurement to that. Um, um, now I will be, I, that will be my mission today to find out what, how do I know what number I'm vibrating at? So what am I doing on a level of consciousness where this is real, right? The kids are arguing in front of you. 
you're getting caught up in the frustration of the moment and you can say to yourself, man, where am I vibrating? This is important. Whether I'm conscious of it or not, I am one with the cause of all that exists. Love is the only dimension that needs to be changed. Go beyond reason to love. It's safe. It's the only state. It's the only safety there is. All states of consciousness are available right now. Enlightenment doesn't care how you get there. There is nothing you need to do first in order to be enlightened. I wouldn't deny this experience to the one mind. Yeah, I love it. That's a nice way of saying things like, I, I wouldn't exactly. What did you think it was that needed to be loved? When you learn to love hell, you will be in heaven. Some deep concepts for a tiny little book. I'm highly going to recommend it. I'm going to put a link. To, I don't make any money from it, but I'm going to put a link to Amazon where you can buy this book if you're interested. Or if you'd like to chat with them about it, give me a call. Send me a DM. I would love to have a conversation. If you've read it and you'd like to talk about it, I would invite you on this show to come and have a conversation with me because I would truly love to have someone who's read this book and thought about it a lot have a conversation. So are you loving the show? Is it helping you? You know a friend that might like or might, you know, benefit from this conversation? Send them a link. Give me a like. Give me a share. Give me a shout out. Love to hear from you. As always, uh, here on Brewing Happiness, just here to share a cup of coffee and some thoughts on how to be happy in today's crazy world. That's our show for today. Until tomorrow, make it a happy day.